Lights, camera, action! Hey! Do y'all like my new little thing? Welcome I'm back to Thursdays. Sold out with Jordana and Renee. We are sold oh, out. <laughs> Scene four, take one. Roll is to spread the gospel. Amen. Today's date, 831.23. Sold out is the producing company. The sound is cackling. Do y'all like that? <laughs> And then the director is Jesus. Woo! And then cameraman Jordana and Renee, because you know. We don't know what we're doing. We never know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, you know what we're going to talk about today. No, we don't. But I do have a subject I want to start on. Okay. You know, no, go for it, girl. Wait, wait, where did it go? Hey, the only thing with this one doesn't tell us how long we're going. Oh, so I don't know how many minutes we're at. Did you move my poster? Oh, yeah, sorry. She moved my poster. Sorry, I didn't know it was important. <laughs> so, yeah, today. Can I open it? Turn it upside down. You're upside down. Oh. Just kidding, don't look yet. Alright. <laughs> okay, ready? Go. Go, team! Woo! Preset. Team Jesus! Yes. Fight! So, today, go, go, go. That was our theme this morning <laughs> at Poppy. Oh, and we're gosh. all on the same team. Amen. So. I really want to speak on that for one second. We're on the same team. If you are a believer and you love Jesus, then act like it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was going to happen. But how do we know how to act like it? <laughs> but, no. um, but if you are a believer and you love Jesus, then treat people how the Lord wants you to treat them. Don't come in judging and don't come in acting a fool. Just be Jesus. Be the light of Jesus to them. And we're all on the same team. We really are on the same team if we're all believers. Like, we have one mission, and it's to fulfill, share the gospel, love Jesus, love everyone, love your neighbor, love it all. But there's new believers that don't that accept it. Jesus. And then they're like, but my old nature would be angry, mad, all of those things. How do new believers learn to act like Jesus? <laughs> Well, number one, you need to read the word. Amen. We had a lot of scriptures on this this morning. Um, but also, me as someone that's been walking with the Lord for a little while now, I still tend to have a moment where I'm like, ah! But I have people on my team. Amen. I have really good people on my team that I can call and talk to. They probably hear you doing it every time you move it. <laughs> and they, they help me. Because I have people on my same my team with the same values and the same goals. And some of them are pretty blunt and honest and they're going to tell me how it is and I need that. Amen. So, pick your team wisely. We're all on the same team. Treat everybody with kindness. And now we'll get back to the podcast. <laughs> pretty, <laughs> I mean, that is pretty good. It is good, right? I mean, we could probably I mean, stay on there a hot minute. We, and we've been on there. And it's, kind of, it's not an easy subject to even talk about either is... It's being on the same team with people you don't want to be on the team with. Amen. That's not an easy subject. So, I mean, we could stay there. Team Jesus. Or Team Jesus. And who, right. how does it make you qualify to be on Team Jesus? What qualifies mm. you? What does qualify you? Romans 10, 9. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Literally, is the guidelines for us to be on the same team. Is that? Mm -hmm. That's simple. Now, there's things that people don't do that you don't like. That's normal. But if it's really something that bothers you, go to them, Matthew 18, and tell them what it is you have against them. But don't talk about them behind their back. And don't cause trouble. Amen. Don't cause trouble. Why? Do you not have anything better to do with your life? <laughs> I give you some stuff. There are places you can volunteer and serve. If you have that much free time on your hands, I will tell you that these people at the nursing home around the corner would love some little Debbie snacks and their nails painted. It's a distraction. Yeah. So... If Don't the enemy can get us pointing fingers inside the church, oh, yes. we're not doing anything and, on the outside. Yes, 100%. <laughs> and even just pointing fingers with your neighbors. Like, let's not do that. Let's all love each other. Amen. We're going to love each other. <laughs> and so, um, I do want to bring up something to y'all, though, that I think as a new believer, number one is, I've had this brought to my attention a little bit this week, and more so. And If you're having problems hearing us when you come on, let us know. Because right here, it'll show us, look, it's getting green when I get louder. Are we getting loud? See? You gotta be louder. Okay, well, we'll be louder. <laughs> Not a problem. Okay, so one of the things that was brought to my attention and just and things is you're a new believer and you're feeling intimidated by going around other people. Mm -hmm. How do you get over that? Uh, well, first of all, you take that step and you reach out to someone that you see that you might have some sort of Wait, bond what with. kind of people are you talking about? Going around with kind oh, of people? Oh, yes. So, like, say my women's coffee or mm -hmm. say the church, walking into church and going to church. Mm -hmm. As a 
Well, as someone that walked into the church, I did have a friend that I met with, but then I knew no one in our <laughs> church. And it's a big church, and it's very intimidating. But don't let that keep you from going to Amen. church. Don't let that keep you from just going to the things that you think that you might need. Amen. And if you don't know the Bible and you don't know where to turn, there have been times where I've literally opened my Bible and went to the table of contents. I did it this morning, trying to find Jeremiah. <laughs> I've literally opened it up and done that. And being sitting next to people that did, they know they're, they're seasoned, seasoned in their Bible and stuff. And I've done that. And I still do that at times. And Jordana is too. Stop letting stuff like that keep you from your where you want to go. Amen. Like, stop it. It get, Bring your phone and just Google. I don't like to blame everything on the enemy, but I will blame that on the enemy. It's lies of saying, <laughs> you don't know where this is. They're going to think you're dumb. Everyone's or, looking at you because you're coming through your Bible yes. and everybody else is already there. Who cares? Amen. Nobody cares. And in my setting and, and where I do coffee, just, it's easier for me to have her look it up and I keep going. Mm -hmm. But don't let that keep you from going to the things that you want to do. Stop being intimidated. Don't listen to those lies. You show up. You bring your Bible. You bring your phone and Google it. Amen. So that was a my spill. And don't <laughs> let people in environments, if you're in the right environment with people, I'm not saying that everyone's perfect. None of us are Jesus. But if you're in the right environment where you're going and you're getting filled up with people that are like-minded, no one's going to put you down. Well, no one's going to come. I read a verse this morning she gave me. I can't tell you where it is now, but iron sharpens iron. As Proverbs 27:17. Yes. <laughs> As a French... Wait, sure. Yeah, you read it. But anyways, that is literally what we're supposed to do. Come together, encourage each other, kind of point out things. But, oof, I just got a word. Our swords. What is our sword? Yeah. The word yeah. of God. It cuts... Y'all are going to laugh because I'm over here thumbing through my Bible trying to find Proverbs. And I it's kinda, literally like the middle of the Bible. I've been in Proverbs <laughs> and I was at the back. Anyways, uh, I believe it's Proverbs 27, 17, but go ahead. Uh, no, because the word of God is sharper than two any two-edged sword cutting between bone and marrow. So literally anything that you have in life, this is like your surgery. This is your surgeon. Is the word of God. It will cut away the things that are not supposed to be there. And it will add the things that are supposed mm -hmm. to be there. How many times in the real flesh do we get faceless and, you know, all the things? Lashes and fake hair. My hair's not yes. fake anymore and I have my real lashes on. But in all reality, this is all we should go off of. It's not about our appearance. It's about what's on the inside. Yes, your heart. And yes. so, it was 2717. I got it. Hey, right. I, I, she's learning. I, look at me go. <laughs> Just couldn't find it at first. Iron sharpens iron. And one person sharpens another. Mm -hmm. I think that's so powerful because, like, even then, just even talking on a team relationship, right? Uh, my strengths aren't her strengths. Her strengths aren't my strengths. And we come together and we make the body. Make the body. <laughs> I had a thing that I read this morning, and it's on my phone. I'm gonna tell you, but it was when I was I went on a rabbit hole of teamwork and all this on Google because that's what I do, and it said <laughs> something along the lines of if we come together to build. The church, right? The church is not a building. The church, Amen. the people. That no doctrine, no language, no appearance, no... It went through the list. Matters. Amen. So, why do we love all this other stuff? Why does it matter where you are and versus where I'm at? It doesn't Amen. matter. Unless so, there's a salvation issue. Really, the only salvation issue would be... Do you believe Jesus is Lord and Savior? Do you confess Him? Do you believe that He rose from the dead on the third day? Those are salvation issues. Everything else, the way we interpret things, those are our opinions and mm -hmm. revelations from the Lord. Personal revelations. She might get a revelation that's different from me from mm -hmm. the same verse. doesn't mean she's wrong and I'm right. It just means the Lord is showing us something different Two at different, that time. Two different things. Amen. And, um... Oh, man, I had something good earlier. Sorry. No, you were totally <laughs> fine. I was thinking about that when I looked it up. Oh, do you remember when I said, what is team? Mm-hmm. I don't remember what you said. It was... <laughs> Are you wanting me to Google, Google it? That's what you're it. saying? So, okay. and, but team, team was together. So I don't know. Do y'all know what team means? The abbreviation for team? Because apparently, I did not know this. And, and there was a few of us. It's very smart to look up definitions of words. Even while you're reading the Bible. If your word is highlighted mm -hmm. and you're like, hmm. I think I know what that means. I would still double check because sometimes the Lord will reveal something deeper just by really understanding what that word means. And highlight it to you. <clears throat> so, well, it says a group of players right forming. Together. A group of players come together as a team to achieve a common goal. There you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> team. To achieve a... No, that's not it. That's okay, not come together. 
No, that's not good. Oh. What is, there was a, um, abbreviation for it. The, know. just look up the abbreviation okay, for it. Okay, okay. So anyways, it was together, each can achieve more or something. I don't know, something like that. Together, everyone accomplishes more. Team. Amen. So as a body of Christ, together. <laughs> we, we got it, guys. We finally <laughs> got it, y'all. Only took us five minutes. <laughs> Um, now I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but together, everyone achieves more. You would have thought I would have really remembered that. So, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple, right? <laughs> I didn't remember either. It's okay. It's pretty simple. <laughs> so, but, I, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. That, <laughs> we're perfect for this. <laughs> we're talking about teams, right? So, I this is my random fact for you guys. So, teams, right, could also be where you work what you're doing, who you're around, right? It doesn't have to be just for Jesus. Well, I don't know if y'all are aware, but Subway is going a little out of the box with their team. Have you heard? No. Okay, me neither. I read this yesterday online, and I had to really Google it. So I'm like, is this for real? So Subway, in September, there's three dates in St. Louis, Missouri, and two in Florida. Do you know what a blimp Balloon is the big thingies that float. Yeah, during like a football game or something, you'll see them with advertisements on it. Or will, they... will you marry me? Yes, that one. That's more fun. But <laughs> <laughs> this one has subway all over it, so it looks just like subway, right? They're going to go in the air a thousand feet or something like that every thirty minutes with seven people aboard to eat their sandwiches for an experience. After that whole <laughs> submarine thing, I'm right going to stay ocean. on the ground. I'm not going to go in a blimp to eat a Subway sandwich. But, but how crazy is that? They're going in the air to eat a Subway sandwich every 30 minutes. Only seven people, which that's a number of perfection. So I find kind of interesting that that's the number well, they take. You know pick. what? If they're taking seven people up, they need to have a string, do you know Jesus? And it's free. Them. It's free. They're not even Who charging them. The blimp, though? <laughs> Obviously, can't they crash <laughs> yeah. easily? And isn't there a weight limit? I mean, you're probably right on all of those things, but I'm telling you, some... that submarine, whatever it was called, is all I keep thinking about when you're like, they're going in the air for an experience. <laughs> oh, it looks like the submarine. Would you skydive? Uh, when my kid turns 18, I will skydive. Oh it. boy! I'm not doing it until he turns 18. Why? Are you scared? Uh, yeah, I am. I don't. And uh, first of all, I don't like to do things like that. Oh, you don't like the height? I'm an emotional cliff jumper, not a physical cliff jumper. <laughs> I can relate so well with that. Actually, that's funny. Um, actually, that was a conversation I had this morning, and I was like, I'm an emotional cliff jumper. And then when he said that, I'm like, I don't want to physically jump a cliff. <laughs> Well, you, if I jump off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff behind me? My dad used to tell me that all the time. Are your friends jump off a cliff? Will you jump off a cliff? And if your I, team jumps off a cliff, well, my jump off a cliff? teen years, I was rebellious, right? And I'd be like, uh, yeah, like, duh. I, mean, I never would. I was like, I'm not that dumb. No, well, I would because I just wanted to prove a point that I didn't care what he was saying. Like, I still wanted to do my thing. But that was my rebellious side of the Lord using it for his glory now. Thank the Lord. <laughs> but again, I had to allow him. Are you going to read this? What is this? I don't, I don't know. It fell out of my Bible. Oh, we're going to read it. Ask God to see things that come your way today, to see it through his eyes. Look to him for understanding. Who wrote that? Did you I write that? No, I didn't write that. Just fell out of her Bible. It's what? pretty good. And then on the side it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. I know what this is. We did a, a, a copy. I did a, gave him a scripture and then asked them what their advice or what it means to them. Well, I mean, this is pretty good. It is very good. We were good. talking about team playing, right? I don't know right? handwriting that is, but it's very good. It reminds me, I'm, I think maybe Trish Bowman. I'm thinking Trish. <laughs> <laughs> but it says, ask God to see the things that come your way today and see it through his eyes. So as a team player, again, <laughs> we have to see people through Je mm -hmm. Jesus' eyes, not our own. We look at people... Uh, through our eyes, we're going to see their failures. We're it's going to so see hard to, y'all. All the things. When they, people cross you and you want to look, you don't want to look through the Lord's eyes. You are like, <laughs> my eyes are red and raging. How can you look? It's hard. I'm just here to tell you it is hard and you have, you can't do it. Jason always not says don't yourself. white knuckle it. Yes, don't white knuckle it. You cannot do it on your own. Amen. You have to lean on the Lord and the Holy Spirit just to get you through because you ain't going to make it. 
And or you'll end, end up in jail because you beat someone up <laughs> on the side of the road or something. But when the Lord speaks to us in those situations, it's usually a very still, small voice. Mm -hmm. La very rare have I ever heard, like, rah, like, ever. It's very, like, very, stop. yes. No. I need that, but he also wants me to be pay attention to him being soft. Me respond the same way he's responding to me, even though I'm irate in that moment. So, anyways. <laughs> well, and it's hard when you're irate to and listen, and you have to have obedience. And I think that that's where the Lord really works and on you is like, you know, me having obedience a year ago, but just me having the obedience now. It's, it's, a, it's a, I'm growing and keep growing. And like they said, the onion and the peeling outer and layers. Layers. Well, you know why onions make you cry? Because when you peel the layers back in real life, you want to cry. She's not wrong. No. As soon as you think you've mastered one area of your life, it's like, well, here we go. Or, or <laughs> here comes an attack out of the box, and you're like, for real? Like, this is a new one. But the attack usually exposes things in our flesh mm -hmm. that still need to die. Yes. So when it says to pick up your cross daily to follow Jesus. Luke 9, 23. Well, I don't know, but I'm glad she does. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm so proud of you. Now I gotta look just to make sure it's right, but you keep going. It's literally dying to flesh. That's how we're picking up our cross. We're putting Jesus above all, oh, above our feelings, above what people say about us. We're putting him above all of those things. So pick up your cross and kill your flesh. Stop being offended. Stop finding fault in everyone or the way they do things because it's not how you do it. It doesn't mean it's wrong. No, it's not. But, mm -hmm. I'll, you know, and then you also are going to get those attacks that are intentionally and, and, and they're mean and they're awful and, and you're not doing anything wrong. You're going to have those too. Yes. So, it is Luke 9, 23. Hey, oh, man, look at me go. Start and everything. And it's one of my favorites. That's how I knew it, but I'm just over here winning. Uh, <laughs> Always. Then he said to them all, If anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, cross daily, and follow me. Amen. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me will save it. Amen. But... You'll know them by their fruits. Amen. You will know them by their fruits. And also today, what was it when I, if the Lord is with you, who can be against you? Mm -hmm. If the Lord is with you, who's against you? <laughs> and he'll and then, work everything out for his glory. Yes, so, he will. Even he if will. you mis make a mistake or you treat somebody wrong, like you shouldn't have, you were convicted, right? The Holy Spirit convicted you, repent. Repent and As let soon it go. as that gets brought up or you feel it, you repent and then let it go. Let it go. That's or singing let it go, like... The frozen version. Let, Let it go. go. I wish I could sing it. That would say it, y'all. So um, I start doing that when people get all flustered in their flesh. I'll be like, Let it go. It probably makes them more mad, but it's okay. <laughs> they get the point. <laughs> when I'm all intense and uptight, because I can get intense and uptight, I don't want to let it go at times. I've gotten better about doing it faster, but that's because I have to lean on the Lord. Because if I did it by myself, I wouldn't do it. Amen. I'd slip some tires and punch someone in the face. <laughs> Literally. Literally, I would. But now I just have to let it go and pray about it. And I'm like, Lord, you block it, you heal it, you bless it, you do whatever you need to do. And I will continue to try to be obedient. So, Amen. Um, I did ask y'all last week if y'all were going to do do something bold oh, for yes. Jesus. Did anyone mm -hmm. do anything bold for Jesus? Did you? Um, yeah. What did you do? <laughs> I didn't do it for my business, though, because I didn't really do. Well, I mean, I did. But anyways. Well, do it however. I mean, for anything. Well, there's multiple ways. But let me just say, I got a phone call from someone, and they were talking about their health and how they were. I don't know this person. We're just acquaintances through Facebook, right? Um, called and was worried about their health. And the fear, I could feel the fear in them. And so I felt the Lord say there's foundation of knowing who they are in me is faulty. And so he said, ask them who their Lord and Savior is. So I did. I was like, hey, who's your Lord and Savior? And they laughed. They're like, right now? I'm like, yes, right now. So we confess, Jesus is Lord and Savior. I said, do you believe in your heart? God raised him from the dead? Yes. Okay, well, then you will be saved. Stop questioning your salvation. You will be saved mm -hmm. from those, those lines. It's not rebuked. Yes, we have to walk with a relationship with the Lord. But I believe when you confess those things, you cannot not walk with the Lord. Like, anyways. He'll start getting you. Did Once you do you anything bold? Um... <laughs> What did I not do? No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, um, I one particular thing. I, I think 
making my son do certain things and, and calling him out and making him be a little more bold. And then uh, we went to the nursing home for their birthday oh, parties. Oh, and we went and sang happy, listen y'all, me singing happy birthday to people, I feel like that's <laughs> bold enough. And there was three of them that I was Amen. But just doing things and making sure I'm mm -hmm. orchestrating. I also asked um, someone at the school and I'm getting the steps to do to do a prayer walk because I want to do it correctly and I also want to do it, I believe we're supposed to do it more publicly. So uh, if we do it correctly and publicly and we set that example that it's okay and it can happen. So I did initiate that and hopefully we'll have an update on that. But Yay. anyways, so we love y'all. I love you. Jesus loves you. And um, we'll see you next week. We're going to have something fun for y'all, hopefully. Bye.